Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening and today we're going to be going over something very special because it's a key ingredient to the back to eating garden for me especially is to plant legumes and the reason why I'm not going to use any nitrogen or any other amendments in the soil like manure or nitrogen fertilizer or nitrogen of any kind is because I have legumes like clover and other species that can take rhizomium bacteria and make it into a uh, nodule on the plant to fix nitrogen in the ground to share it to other plants and also to help itself. It's also what I'm going to be talking about is there's a myth out there or starting of a myth that people do not believe this and one channel especially is saying that it's not true. So this is just a video response, a kind video response to that. Now I just want to show the more facts of the situation so uh, everybody can get a better understanding and make their own decision. So I have a demonstration for us already in the barn so let's take a walk up there. So this is my little demonstration set up in the barn. I have a uh, very frost hit uh, pepper plant on the left hand side and those are all peppers. I didn't get to pick them ahead of time. That's a little bit of a loss there. And the other thing is a clump of clover on your right hand side which is my uh, legume family plant that fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere onto nodules on its roots. So let's go into the explanation of how it works. So just some general basic information first about a legume plant. A legume plant has the ability to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere onto its root with nodules. So it uses a good bacteria which is called rhizobium bacteria which I'm going to use as a, as a sample is our uh, piece of candy here. We're going to use that as our bacteria in this demonstration. So, now the bacteria is in our soil. That's a good bacteria. Not all things are bad. So we have our good bacteria sitting in the soil waiting for the roots of the clover plant to come down. Now it goes into the clover plant's roots. Not so much the root itself here, but into the little fine hairs of the roots. So let's say the piece of cardboard now is our root. This is one single root and the little piece of aluminum wire that comes off here is our root hair. Now that bacteria infects that root hair and what it does next, it deforms it and it will bend it into a circle, like so. Now what starts growing on there is our nodules and that bacteria starts multiplying and what it does, it makes a nodule and I'll show you what that looks like. So we have our first formation of our nodule, which is just the structure of it. Now the bacteria, they start multiplying, like it says, and we're going to use these mini marshmallows, and that starts growing. So it starts making that bigger nodule, like so. And that continues to grow. So with all that nitrogen in the air, that plant is taking that nitrogen through its root system to that rhizobium bacteria and keeps making that nodule bigger. Now, that plant is going to save all that nitrogen in the nodule. But this is the key point, and this is where I want to show everybody through my research and also asking somebody, which I'll show in my reference later, is how that nodule, prior to even seeding or anything else too, when that plant is growing, it's sharing nitrogen that is that bacteria. So how does it do it? So remember, only the legume plant can fix that nitrogen from the atmosphere into those white nodules or root nodules now from that bacteria, the rhizobium bacteria. So how is it going to get from that legume plant all the way to the pepper plant on your left hand side and share that nitrogen that's in the nodules or even prior to the nodules forming as long as the bacteria is in that root? That's very simple. So this is going to be done through the use of mycorrhizal fungi and I'm going to be using this string to demonstrate the mycorrhizal fungi hyphae that's going to go from the same plant of the clover to the pepper plant. Now the mycorrhizal fungi has to have that in common with the other plant. It has to be the some, same type of mycorrhizal fungi which is either endo or ecto. So both of them have to be endo or both of them have to be echo for them to transfer over those nutrients of nitrogen. So the mycorrhizal fungi, which also invades a root, because it's a spore, grows inside the root and then grows and then reaches into the soil 
and will search out other plants or other nutrients in the ground. So when that comes across another plant, because the other plant will accept the mycorrhizal fungi and its hyphae, now it will transfer these nutrients that are in here, the nitrogen, through the root, through the hyphae to the other plant, giving it nitrogen. Now, as long as the bacteria and the mycorrhizal fungi is in the soil, it's going to transfer all these nutrients. And that's what I count on in my garden. So it's not a myth. It's just simple science that it's doing it this way. And there's a lot of reported information about this, and I will share that with you. So going through the research, uh, there was a lot of articles. Uh, I didn't know if I was reading them correctly or not. So I went to an outside source. And her name is Dr. Elaine Ingram. Now you can uh, search her name is right here in the correct spelling. And what you can do is you can she has uh, videos on YouTube, and also you can Google that name. Uh, she's a doctorate. She has a PhD. Uh, she's well known throughout the world. And so I sent her the message on the bottom about does the legume family share nitrogen with other living plants through mycorrhizal fungi? when they are young or before they turn into protein for seeds on them, even a small amount. And she was very kind to write back, and this was her answer. There's at least five papers in scientific literature to show exactly what you're talking about, or only even better than what you are asking about. Mycorrhiza, and then it goes to these groups. Now, I will copy and paste these two things here that you can research on Google, and again, make your own decision. But it goes further down that um, for plants surrounding the nitrogen-fixing legume, the mycorrhizal colonization, these plants that become mycorrhizal will also benefit because the fungus colonizes in their roots and thus the proteins produced by the nitrogen-fixing will flow into the non-legume plant. So that's what I'm uh, projecting and this is where it's very valuable to me because I don't wish to buy uh, fertilizer that I don't need, uh, even a certified organic fertilizer, if I can grow a legume, which is a perennial crop, which will do it again and again and again. So I'm lowering my, lowering my cost overhead by having these legume plants in the ground by supplying nitrogen, nitrogen to the crops that I need them to. If you have any questions or I missed anything that's important to you, please let me know in the comments below. Love to hear from you. And I wish to thank you very much for watching this video and taking time out of your day to do so. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and please share with your friends in the garden community. Thank you very much.